Hello, I'm Yang Rui. The Cold War was over, but the cold peace descends in East Asia. China is viewed by Americans as a threat after years of reassessing the policy of engagement since Richard Nixon in the early 1970s. Will the rise of China be a threat to the existing world order, which is characterized by neoliberalism? Can the Belt and Road Initiative help reinforce the emerging bipolarity between the United States and China? Today, I'm very happy to interview Professor Yan Xuetong, a renowned scholar of international studies and power politics of Tsinghua University. We are happy to do the interview a few days ahead of the World Peace Forum, and Professor Yan is the Secretary General of this forum, an annual event in Beijing. Welcome to Dialogue, Professor Yan. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Can you brief us on the goals and uh, direction of this uh, World Peace Forum here in Tsinghua University? Uh, the World Peace Forum actually is a platform for international or uh, strategic thinkers to present their ideas and their thoughts, and sometimes uh, for proposals or suggestions for international security cooperation. So I would define it, the uh, World Peace Forum as the uh, th uh, think forum instead of a policy forum. You put your finger on a very interesting issue about the difference between the policy maker and strategic thinker. Yeah. Because their way of thinking, I'm afraid, is very different one from another. Why do you lay emphasis on the big difference? Okay. The World Peace Forum is non-governmental. That's the, our difference from the Shangri-La dialogue, from the uh, Davos, from the uh, Monic uh, Security Conference. They have this uh, uh, defense minister, foreign minister, and uh, uh, prime minister, and even president to give a uh, talk there. All of these speakers represent their government, their official uh, uh, guidelines. But uh, for World Peace Forum, all the participants come here to present their personal ideas. They do not represent, represent any government uh, guidelines. So that's why I defined it as a, a thinking forum for people to present a thought, th uh, uh, thinking and ideas instead of the policies. Let's look at something that is concerned all major strategic thinkers, Chinese and foreign alike at this moment. Whether the peaceful rise of China threatens to change the world order that Dr. Harry Kissinger says has been able to evolve since 1680, 1648, the Westphalian, uh, Westphalian world order. Do you think this is going to be undermined due to the current geopolitical reconfiguration, particularly the growing momentum of the American unilateralism, if not the isolation, uh, isolationism? Mm -hmm. I think there is a misunderstanding. Some people believe that if China rests peacefully, and then China will not challenge the international order. That is uh, totally wrong. No matter a rising power to achieve that goal through the peaceful approaches or through the uh, methods of the war, it definitely will change the order. It's the, the difference is how to change the uh, uh, international order. Change the order peacefully or change the order through violent way. So when people believe that a peaceful rise will not challenge the order, they didn't understand that the rise means the change of the order. Alteration of the current uh, world order might imply a serious message, if not a warning for Americans, that uh, the U.S.-led world order might be undermined because they, say they see everything through the prism that uh, in this uh, rules-based world, you have to follow rules set forth by Western powers, particularly the United States, since the end of the Second World War. And China says, uh, with the emergence of uh, uh, developing countries, you need to take G20 instead of G7 more seriously since the 2008 financial tsunami. Yeah. There's uh, more and more Chinese. They argue that the current change will be bigger than the change after World War II. Personally, I doubt about that. And I even doubt the current change can be more sincere or the larger and uh, more important than the change after Cold War. The current international order is established after the collapse of the Soviet Union. It's not a start started from the end of the world, uh, world War II. So what does it mean? It means that now we will see 
the international order will experience a change. But the change may be just middle level, not that dramatic like the change after World War II and the Cold War. So from my understanding, we need to uh, make an a objective judgment, make a judgment that's in consistency with the object uh, uh, society. Many American policymakers are afraid that what is happening in the Chinese academic circles, uh, particularly regarding international politics, uh, and if you look at what they call the majority tyranny of public opinions regarding the bilateral relationship, the most consequential one in the world, is that Chinese uh, tend to dismiss American power, discredit American democracy, and dismantle the world order that the United States has built since, uh, as you said, 1991 when the Cold War came to an end peacefully. Uh, I think uh, some people uh, over expect, expect it, no, over um, uh, estimated China's uh, capability. And uh, if to totally dismantle the order established by the U.S., it requires at least the similar capability like the United States. I doubt any country has less capability than the U.S can destroy the, uh, uh, the system or the order established by the U.S. Currently, the, car the international order faced the challenge not from China, from U.S. itself. It's the United States has decided, no, I should say the Trump administration decided to destroy or dismantle the uh, international order established by America. China by now do not have that kind of capability to uh, destroy this order. Exactly, European allies of the United States have been seriously of upset by, for example, the pullout from the Iran nuclear deal and the climate change pact that they reached in Paris. Uh, therefore, uh, the transatlantic relationship, which has become very strained, uh, will be a factor of disruption. Having said this, uh, what do you think of the rise of protectionism and populism that may seriously discredit American or Western democracy? You cannot deny that many liberals in China really look to the United States yes. for inspirations uh, about democracy, uh, emancipation or liberalization of the social governance one way or another since uh, 40 years ago when China decided to open itself up. Do you think this uh, is going to be a fact? Yeah. At least the liberalism do not face the challenge from the China's mo Chinese model. Chinese model is not that popular in the world and cannot challenge the, uh, uh, liberalism, which has already dominated the world since uh, uh, 1992. And actually, the liberalism faces a serious challenge from what? From anti-establishment, anti-establishmentism. Mm -hmm. That grow, grown up in the U.S. That means the challenge to the liberalism from the inside of the Western society, but not from the non-Western society. Currently, from my understanding, the anti-establishmentism is a gaining momentum. It's uh, become stronger and stronger. Liberalism becomes weaker and weaker in the U.S. So I think uh, the liberalism faced the uh, uh, dilemma is that this liberalism, based on the support from the Western society, unfortunately, the Western society is changing by itself. For from the liberalist dominated society to an uh, anti-establishment dominated society. Maybe at this moment, 50 to 50. But uh, under the Trump's rule, one thing is very clear. And uh, anti-establishments will have, a, have a more momentum to become stronger than liberalism. You said on many occasions, Professor Yan, that uh, the world has entered into a new bipolar world order yes. between the United States and China. Yeah. The, the issue by the end of the day, I'm afraid, is uh, whether you are alluding to the possibility of uh, yet another Cold War descending on the Asia-Pacific Ocean, or in American words, the Indo-Pacific uh, region. Mm -hmm. What the United States really wants is to keep itself uh, ahead of China for at least 20 to 30 years, mm -hmm. uh, technologically, scientifically, militarily, politically, whatever you mention it. They just want to be absolutely and unconditionally the number one. Yes. Do you think this is a, a, a reflection of a hegemony that should have been buried with the end of the Cold War or that's going to last for yet another half a century? Because President Obama said the United States stands ready to lead the world by another century. 
Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think there is a misunderstanding. Belief the uh, bipolarity equals a cold war. Now, the bipolarity and cold war are two things. And uh, uh, Reagan formally announced the end of the Cold War in 1988 when the bipolarity continued for another three, four years. So that means uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union ended the bipolarity, but the Cold War ended four years before that. Today, the same. Why four years ahead of the end of the bipolarity? Yeah. bipolarity? Because the Cold War refers to a kind of a special competition or confrontation. Bipolarity refers to the power structure of the major powers. What was the hallmark oh, the uh, that hallmark characterizes is the, the end of the Cold War? The hallmark is uh, uh, Reagan's uh, uh, visit to Moscow and signs the contract with the Soviet Union about the uh, reduce the uh, nuclear weapons. Yeah. Not the Reykjavik summit concerning the uh, SS-20 so approaching second. Yeah, so when both sides agreed to reduce nuclear weapons, and they said that, okay, we are no longer confronted as before. So that's why Reagan said that, uh, now, the uh, U.S. never treat the uh, Soviet Union as an evil, uh, evil, uh, evil empire. Here is a very uh, critically important issue concerning stability of the world. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, or are you convinced that the bipolarity will guarantee more of the world's stability, or the other way around, a <laughs> unilateral uh, framework of world politics? The structuralists argue that the bipolar uh, system is uh, in favor of the stability. But actually, uh, from my understanding, the post-Cold War history has proved that the unilateral system is uh, similar like the bipolar system. Actually, the stability from Anthony was maintained by nuclear weapons rather than by the structure of the powers. So by now, we can hardly to make the judgment or make an argue, argument, bipolar, unipolar, and the multipolar, which, is, uh, 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 which configuration is in favor of uh, uh, stability. Now, it's uh, theoretically speaking, and uh, there is uh, no common understanding. Thank you so much. You are watching Dialogue with Professor Yan Xiutong with Tsinghua University. He is the Secretary General of the World Peace Forum that's to be sponsored by Tsinghua University. And we are talking about whether bipolarity or unilateralism will guarantee more of the world's stability since the end of the Cold War. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Why do you think uh, increasingly Western powers uh, share the same skeptical sentiments? They can force them to follow China's uh, leadership. Do, do you think the uh, Belt and Road Initiative uh, is eventually an issue of transparency? I, I don't think the dialogue will help uh, to uh, improve uh, mutual understanding. What do you think of this uh, uh, factor of disruption that China has to take into consideration very seriously? Trump's problem is not what he said. Trump's problem is what he did. By now, I cannot see any foreign power can change Trump. Welcome back, Professor Yan. Now let's look at the position that China stands for in shaping and navigating a peaceful development of the world. The co-prosperity, in President Xi Jinping's words, if you look at the essence of a Belt and Road Initiative, why do you think uh, increasingly Western powers uh, share the same skeptical sentiments about what is implied by BRI? Mm -hmm. BRI is uh, actually a kind of initiative suggested by the Chinese government to establish more uh, uh, infrastructures in foreign countries mainly based on Chinese uh, capital. But then the Western countries uh, will uh, uh, suspect about the motivation behind it because and uh, they do not understand why China established these infrastructures and uh, add no benefits. So that means uh, when any country adopt a policy and make a, uh, uh, make a uh, tell, meanwhile tell the others, no, these policies are not serve our own interests, and people will doubt that's a conspiracy. So that's why currently people, some of Westerners, and uh, uh, labeled the uh, BRI as the uh, debt strategy. That means that they said, they they said that China want to uh, make uh, other countries uh, become a uh, uh, debt debtor and uh, uh, heavily rely on China's uh, uh, capital 
so they can force them to follow China's uh, leadership. Uh, you know, with the abusive use of uh, our forex reserves, particularly when our current account declines uh, due to the trade tensions between the United States and China, policy banks in China are reconsidering uh, wisdom of uh, you know spending extensively for the Belt and Road Initiative. Having said this, uh, do, do you think uh, the Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, is eventually an issue of transparency. A few days ago, I was talking to a head of the EU Chamber of Commerce, and he said, despite the trade disputes across the Atlantic Ocean, European Union shares the same suspicion that uh, uh, social governance as well as corporate governance on the Chinese side have caused serious consternation and cautions from the Western society, and therefore they have sufficient reasons uh, to have a dialogue, if not to question uh, well, what BRI eventually wants to achieve. I, I don't think the dialogue will help uh, to uh, improve uh, mutual understanding. And uh, when the dialogue uh, carried out with both sides talking something is not real, and tell the other side what they real think about, I don't think dialogue will help to improve mutual understanding. What about uh, using a the big The question stage? Is, that, is that each side have to tell the other side, based on the principle that my foreign policy serves my own interests. Only both sides tell the other side, my policy and serve my interests, but not yours, and then they can achieve the mutual understanding. But I'm afraid, Professor Yang, you have been left a little bit uh, uh, embarrassed by The Art of the Deal, a book written by Donald Trump before he sworn in as the United States President. He yeah. said, you need to impose maximum pressure. Mm -hmm. You gave a bid of 100%, you end up achieving 50%. Mm -hmm. That's what he wanted to achieve in the process of denuclearization as well as in the mm -hmm. trade war, which is looming larger and larger between the two sides. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of this uh, uh, factor of disruption that China has to take into consideration very seriously? Well. My understanding, Trump's problem is not what he said. Trump's problem is what he did. For instance, I don't think that these uh, European countries really worry about what he said about America first. And European countries worry about what most is that they enforce the European countries to increase uh, their military budget. And uh, he set uh, additional uh, custom on their exports to the U.S. So the people dislike the Trump is because he's a policy. It's not because he rhetoric talk. No matter what bad terms he talks about, if his policy can make the other side benefit from your uh, 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 policy, and they will welcome uh, uh, to it. The same for the BRI. And the BRI faces the same thing. The question is not whether we say this uh, initiative is good or bad. The question is uh, whether this country can benefit from this project or not. Majority view uh, from both China and the United States uh, points out, Professor Yan, China is not in a position to change the perception of President Donald Trump. It is from within the American domestic politics uh, that might help yes. uh, change his behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the overriding concern for President Trump is A, to survive the midterm election, B, to win re-election uh, three years later, yes. and therefore he is clearly aware that only the alleged China threat could help put the, uh, all political forces in the establishment together, yeah. Republicans and Democrats. Yeah. Therefore, China is singled out uh, <laughs> for the bashing, <laughs> so he, he will do whatever he can to rally all political forces behind him and to maximize the political capital that he could possibly leverage for winning the campaign. Yeah. By now, I cannot see any foreign power can change the trend. And Trump's goal is not to be a great leader of the world. He wants to be a great leader of the United States. Well, he wants to be the laureate of the Nobel Peace Prize. He, he just wants to be the so-called great uh, leaders of the United States. So he needs domestic support more than international support. But would, we would never ever underestimate the uh, approval rating that he boasts of at this moment. That is a surge to a little bit over 50 percent. Very much uh, 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 out of the expect. I mean, uh, surpassed the expectation. Outbid, I mean, Public expectations have been beaten by his uh, e 
unbelievable track record, unbelievable <laughs> performance in the White House. So he's going to win. He's going to win the elections. He's going to win the midterm elections. So we're going to have a formidable force. I, I cannot make uh, any prediction about the result of the election, but one thing is clear is that the U.S. is uh, very politically divided, and uh, at least uh, Trump is not a minority at this moment. So what does it mean? It means that no matter you like it or not, you have to accept the fact he is the leader of the United States, which is the largest, strongest uh, power in the world. They say since the entry into the WTO back in the year 2001, what China has achieved deviates radically from what the United States uh, wants to uh, happen in, in China. They say the industrial policies of China, for example, 2025, made in China, is a nightmare for the Americans. It's not because of uh, China's uh, ambition for high technology. It's the way high technology is pursued and acquired in China. They say this is unfair. This is what uh, President Trump wants to hammer home in domestic politics. So what do you think of the big disputes? Well, I think that this is very normal for all the teams in the uh, World Cup and uh, the team who will win them and it's a nightmare to the uh, team who lose the game. So this is a competition between the major powers and I think it's a very normal for dominating the power, worry about the rising power to uh, surpass it, to catch up. So I think this is a very normal phenomenon. It's not, nothing strange. In fact, uh, part of the confidence of the new generation of the Chinese leadership comes from what we call the Chinese soft power. And you've been addressing this issue for yes. years. It is eventually soft power, as uh, Joseph Nye argues, that will persuade the rest of the world to accept you as uh, something real, something that can persuade the world without the use of force. I have a different view from the Joseph Nye mm -hmm. about uh, the components of the soft power. Mm -hmm. He supposed the culture or the value is, uh, uh, plays the, a key role, but I don't think so. I think these uh, culture and the value are just the resources. And the key va uh, 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 variable of the soft power is the political leadership. So if you look at the situation in the U.S., after Trump got into the White House, Americans' value, Americans' culture is still the same, but Americans' soft power declined dramatically because of the change of the leadership. So same for China. I don't think Confucianism, communism, any ideology can determine the, uh, the strength of uh, our soft power. It depends on the leadership. If the leadership is uh, capable, he can make the soft power is, uh, very, very powerful. If the leadership is uh, weak, and no matter what resources we have, no matter what uh, kind of uh, cultural uh, resources or the uh, political values and uh, advanced political values, and our soft power will be very minimum. I'm afraid in saying that you have humiliated the wisdom and the sophistication of the ordinary folks. So what you talk about is Ying Xiong Shi Guan, the uh, historical outlook about no, heroes, no, 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 no. elites, uh, just the minor uh, population on, on, on top of the pyramid. Well, every country, since the human being established a state, and as soon as we have state, the fate of the state decided by the government which are controlled by a small group of people. No state, the future, or the fate decided by the ordinary people. So the history has not changed. My understanding, in the next thousand years, and it won't change. So the question is not what philosophy you adopt. The fact is that what, have, what kind of a fact you know. What if a slip of judgment for the top leadership is shaping their course of development? Will it be regulated and supervised by the opposition forces, by the independence of the media? Because uh, why is the leadership fine? But leadership are human. They could make human mistakes. Yes. Uh, what can be used to make sure that nothing would go wrong? The United States boasts of a, a mechanism of using whatever regulatory mechanisms uh, and institutions. But in China, it seems uh, this is something missing from our political culture. The American liberalism firmly believe the system has a strong constraint on the leadership. And then they are so disappointed by Trump. They find the American system not that effective. Definitely, American's political system have more constraint on the leadership than our system in China. But 
the steel looks uh, very plain and very pain. That means uh, they're not that strong, not that effective, and the tramp can make a lot of uh, decisions which are not accepted by the system. And so what I mean? I mean the system is established by what? By leadership. The leadership can establish a system and they can ruin a system. They can destroy a system. So if you compare system and the leadership, which one is uh, uh, more powerful? I would argue that leadership is uh, more powerful than system. But I'm afraid our American and European friends would seriously disagree with you because they say Definitely. that their political institutions have been voted into office through the use of ballot box instead of uh, leadership itself. I, I highly respect their belief, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm really sorry for them. They cannot explain why their belief cannot explain that phenomenon of the Trump. Why Trump make an older belief looks so plain. <laughs> Are you predicting the end of a new liberalism for, I mean, that has remained the backbone of a, a liberal world order, a liberal world economic order. With the end of the Cold War, people like uh, Francisco, Francisco Fukuyama and uh, uh, Dr. Brzezinski says, uh, uh, the uh, last man, the end of the history in such books, uh, that uh, it is uh, the liberal world order that has prevailed. Fukuyama has already fully disproved by history. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> his theory doesn't work. His theory uh, is not consistent with the reality. So actually, from my understanding, the current uh, so-called uh, trade war has already illustrated that. And the Trump do not only have the capability to destroy, um, to, to, to not destroy, or to uh, undermine American liber uh, uh, liberalism. He can even destroy the liberalist trade order, which is uh, under the liber guid guidance of liberalism. Now Trump said, no, he doesn't want to have the liberalist uh, trade order. He wants to have a, fair, uh, uh, a fair, uh, fair trade order. So I mean that uh, it's not because Trump personally is uh, strong because uh, he is the uh, leader of the strongest uh, country. He can use the country's uh, strong the resources to do something other country cannot uh, resist. You know, Professor Yan, you and uh, Mr. Keshu Mababani from the National University of Singapore work hand in hand to discredit American democracy. And yet, with the World Peace Forum ahead, they would think uh, Professor Yan represents China threat. <laughs> because you don't believe a liberalism that lays the groundwork of their ideology and why the post-Cold War world order should continue to function. But we'll keep this debate open for more of a dialogue here. I really appreciate your wisdom and sophistication in articulating your academic views, not policy views. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot.